When America is starved for good sports sedans, a Bogan slop rocket becomes a sophisticated enthusiast car. I drove demons and Callaways and Chevys that didn't stay. Oh, point me to something I can get. Go to any large car show and you'll run into some cheeseburger wingadinga who sunk six figures into a 60s four-door sedan to make it run and drive like a modern car. You know, LS engine, disc brakes, Tremec gearbox, Bluetooth, all the speakers, airbag suspension, modern bucket seats, digital dash, tinted windows, keyless locking, 400 horsepower, power steering, air conditioning. And when you ask him about his car, his belly shakes like a bowl full of bullshit and he says, It's just like a modern car! Eh, <sighs> you could have bought a Chevy SS and saved some money. Because that's what you just built here. I get it. I get it. Your car, your canvas. But remember the third rule of acquisition. Never spend more for an acquisition than you have to. Right now, Chevy SS's are high 30s, low 40s on the used market. And what you get for your money is a rear-wheel drive car with a six-speed manual transmission and 415 horsepower from an LS3 V8. From a sizing standpoint, it's the edgelord missing link between the Malibu and the Impala. And it looks it. But then... The Chevy SS isn't about appearances. On one hand, Chevy wanted to create a car to replicate the Pontiac G8, since the Pontiac brand was taken out behind the barn in 2009. But the problem is, there wasn't any real market demand for a new Pontiac G8-style car in 2013, as evidenced by the fact that the SS only sold 12,000 units over the course of the four years it was in production for the United States market. That's 3,000 cars a year, nowhere near enough to justify the investment Chevy was placing in the SS. And that's a shame because the SS is very much an enthusiast car in all ways. Not a straight road to be found. No, 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 no. and a proven daily driver in keeping with the de facto theme of the season. But the Chevy SS offers more horsepower than your average driver would ever realistically need in their daily life, but the option of having that power means you can scratch that itch whenever it hits. Because it's that little stretch in Tilden Township where there isn't another soul in sight, and only God is watching. And he didn't say anything about horsepower in the Ten Commandments. And roll into it. With the SS, plainness is part of its aesthetic. 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 And an appearance that's cleaner than a Mr. Rogers book of swears. And this is an American cult classic before it even left the showroom. The, the, the Chevy SS is like a band that's breaking up after their first album. It wasn't necessarily state-of-the-art, but the SS was very much a modern car that wasn't all too far out of place from its competitors in the technology department. But then, that ended up not mattering anyway since the SS didn't sell. When it was first released in 2013, reports had expectations for the Chevy SS sales to settle between 15 and 20,000 units per year, which makes the roughly 3,000 miserable units they actually sold for each year far more embarrassing to General Motors' bottom line. At an MSRP of $44,470, it wasn't even like the SS was some sort of cost-prohibitive car. I mean, I'm saying it's not cheap or anything, even on the used market. But it could have been worse. You know what? I gotta go ask Bruce Han a question. Bruce, I have a question if you got a minute. Yeah. All right. Say a guy comes into you and he wants, he has like a, an Impala, but he wants it to drive and act and everything. He wants an L LS3, he wants a Tremec 6 speed, he wants air conditioning, power steering, he wants a stereo. He wants his old car to act like a normal car. Like, can you ballpark like what that would be? Uh, does he have the car already? Yeah, let's say let's say this imaginary person has a mid '60s Impala bone stock, and he wants it to be a new car. And I'm getting all the parts. 
Uh, yeah, let's say he doesn't have. I'm gonna do everything brand new, uh, around 50 to 60 grand. If everything's brand new and we're upgrading all the brakes, AC, power steering, uh, motor trans, custom drive shaft, around that area, I'd say. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bruce. No problem. I'm going to get ahead of this guy. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Harsh ride for Pittsburgh. Other reviews praise the SS magnetic suspension, but those journalists didn't drive an SS in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a city which paved over cobblestone streets with cheap asphalt so potholes show up with every spring thaw. They put metal plates over the holes if they want to. Most of the time they don't. And sometimes there's no asphalt at all and you are driving on century-old stone. So you put the SS in comfort mode, but it can't keep up. The magnetic ride gets overwhelmed and the car starts washing around, waving like the ocean. But not a cruise ship pleasant malaise era Cadillac way, no. More like rough seas, rowboat, oh, oh, gonna throw up way. The owner said comfort mode makes him sick in Pittsburgh, and I felt it too. And the only solution is to keep the SS in sport mode. The ride will be stiff, and the potholes will make you bounce, but at least your lunch stays down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at this shot. Look at this shot. The SS blends right in with that cruise or Malibu or whatever piece of GM crap that is. No one ever knows the SS is a performance car. My name's Harry. Harry? I don't like this car. It's not snazzy. Thanks, Harry. The point of this American Commodore is that it's invisible and contemporary. A joy through secrecy. Chevy SS. For the man with a 10-inch cock who doesn't have an After Dark Twitter account. Chevy SS. Stealth every day. Chevy SS. Brought to you by Thrill Jerking. This one time... I jerked off during freshman orientation at college. I snuck off during an assembly in the student union building when they were telling us how our IDs work in the dining hall. Swipe quickly. Great, really. You needed 45 minutes of my time for that. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm gonna jerk off in here. Dude, no one's in here. How fast can I... Oh, I don't even need to get hard. Yeah, I know how to breathe quiet. These hood vents do go somewhere. They don't cool much, but look, they are functional. They go right through into the engine bay. It's a manual transmission and it does have hill assist, but you only get two seconds of hill assist before it lets go. To put that in perspective, my Subaru Forester, you put that hill, hill assist is always on and it will stay on indefinitely. The Chevy SS, it doesn't have patience. It'll let the brakes go after like two seconds. Once we got the car a little bit outside Pittsburgh, the SS felt a whole lot better because you get that torque at any time. It's not going to really work in six gear. Six gear is just for cruising. There's no torque there. Just put it in fifth and then you pull away. And everybody in the car was comfortable as long as the roads were okay. And because this Chevy SS is also a family car. The Chevy SS is the logical continuation for, you know, a family man who wants a performance car and maybe has outgrown the Ford Focus ST. I called that one of the perfect performance family cars. But if you need more than that and you need a vid, like, oh, Focus, I didn't like that. Well, we need a larger car. You can, you can sell the family on an SS by not calling it an SS. Just say, uh, how about a four-door sedan, a, a Chevy four-door sedan? Fine, and you say nothing about that. You go get a Chevy SS, and then if you really want to, you get a butter knife, and you pop off the SS badges on the back. They don't care what it is. The rest of the family, they don't know about sports cars or anything. That They see Chevy sedan, and it's like, oh, it had good wheels on it. Great, good. They're going to sit in these seats. They're going to love it. The only thing that's going to clue them in is the second you put that thing in the sports mode, the exhaust gets loud. But you already bought the car now. The, the baby seats fit in it. You're golden. Pass anyone, anytime. Kill any hill and rule every on-ramp. Now you're going to feel the weight in the turns, but you're meant to because this is a big American V8 car. But with a stick shift, you're never bored. Oh, I'm back on Auto Tempest looking at these things again. But the problem is that General Motors never put any major promotion into the SS because they never expected it to sell. 
They were just fulfilling an agreement that they would bring some Holden vehicles to the States to allow the company to keep the GM Holden Port Melbourne factory open until 2017, at which point GM Holden would transition to becoming a national sales company and a full-time importer. That's why us Americans got the Commodore. And that's why General Motors didn't seem to care if it succeeded or failed, because it was simply meant to fulfill an agreement on paper. It wasn't anticipated that enthusiasts would take to the SS like they did, but they are if you could, if you look at the used market prices on these things. But when you consider that this was Chevy's first rear-wheel drive V8 sedan since the fourth generation Caprice and the seventh generation Impala SS, it's not that shocking to imagine why this had a certain novelty appeal. But enthusiasts, we don't matter to big car companies because our dollars circulate amongst ourselves instead of going up to dealers. Long story short, General Motors created a self-fulfilling prophecy on four wheels. It wasn't meant to sell, so it didn't. And what we're left with is a cult classic cut down before many could even get the chance to experience it. But then, when a car doesn't make you money, it's hard to justify continuing to produce it. Business can be a double-edged sword, but also frustratingly straightforward. And it seems to me you lived your life like a wing a ding thing. Cause you had to let the boomers choose what your fate would be And how I'd like to have phoned you But I was broke as shit GM killed you long before